The Annapolis Valley, Nova Scotia. A wealthy farming community. But our story concerns the people who live in the hills above the valley. The people of South Mountain. Their traditional jobs as barrel makers and farm laborers for the apple industry have been displaced by modern technology. They have been left out of the mainstream by a lack of income and education. Well, there's some on that and that some of the people, they can't read or write and they just feel lost and some who don't go outside the door that much to associate with people just because they can't read and write. Because if they do, some of them will think they usually get made fun of or laughed at. And so they just stick around their own place. In this film, we will share the lives of two of these families. There are many like them right across Canada. When you have two kids, and doing a wash, you couldn't go to the laundromat. It was cost a fortune to go over there, and by the time you paid someone to take you over and do your wash and dry it and bring it back, you might as well stay home and wash your milk by hand. I done it for quite a few years by hand, scrubbing it in the sink. Never had no scrub board, just used my hands for scrubbing the clothes. And a good many days I'd turn around and have blisters. You can't survive anymore just hunting and trapping. You know, I make sure Danny and Daryl will finish school. As far as I got in school for my grades, Quite a few places he wouldn't hire me on because I never got past grade nine. My father drank at time and it was hard to study. And then he'd have his friends in there. And once they started coming in there, you didn't feel like getting your books out and doing anything because you couldn't concentrate on your work. Gordy has a lot of health problem. He has trouble with one side. So and then he has allergies. So he went over to Dr. Kinsman. Kinsman told him that he's not able to work and that he'd have to be put on a disability. Between family lines and odd jobs of babysitting and house cleaning, that's what we Don't lived on for mm. quite a few years yeah. before Gordy got his pension started. It's just had to take one day at a time. We just had to wait till the next day came to see what was what and where the money was coming from or where the groceries was going to come from. You hang on, and you got time, you're picking everyone up. You're, point, you're pulling, not me. We were lucky to get the house cheap. We bought it for $250 and hauled it up on the mountain on the back of a truck. That's Ivan, Gordy's brother. When Ivan comes over, he usually call first and ask if he could bring a couple balls of beer or a six pack or something. And then they get in the mood for joking and carrying on. When Ivan starts carrying on, he don't know when to stop. He just wants to carry on and joke all the time. I'd rather have him that way than it would in the fighting rowdy mood. Ah! Uh -huh. 
out of your league. <laughs> well, it's like hard to look dead, Ken. I used to be able to yodel, but I can't now. My throat's gone all to hell. That's the only thing I can't do. I'm all freaked up. I can't do it. <laughs> Lawson Brown is Gordy's father. I'm back but 19. I was back but 50 years old. I could do it. <laughs> If I could change things, I'd just make sure that the people were getting equal in the world. The poor people, they haven't got a chance. Because every cent they get, they got to take and make ends meet. And they should just take the income of the high people and cut it back and give it to the ones that need it the most. And same as over in, well, over in Africa. People over there, they haven't got a chance. In this county alone, over 1,000 people live in really poor housing. It was in response to this that some of the churches in the area began to work together to build small new houses for them. Bruce and Elaine, the second couple whose lives we share in this film, have been in the interchurch housing list for a long time. They have faced many difficulties, but so have we in the interchurch group. I heard in the wind that they are building us a new home, so come on in and have a look at the old one. Well, you got a chance, because it ain't going to last much longer. Where's okay. my flower, Bruce? In the bag. Good job. You're coming well. good, Bruce. Look. Oh. oh, I think they're a little too hot. I don't know, but they could have been a little thicker. Don't that feel queer? What? My ears are ringing. I make it nice. Up close. Somebody's going to give me a call. Dale. Rings twice. Have you ever had that in your ears? Your ears ring twice? Kind of, kind of fair feeling. Deal. I'm no shorts her. That's someone okay. thinking about you. I'm gonna call you. That's true. Hey, Andrew, Bruce, it's Dale. Hello. Yeah, how are you? Is it Dale? Oh, uh, not so good. Is it Dale? I told you. Hi. Too many aches and pains. Told ya. Dale Germain is their interchurch counselor. Is that? Him? Will they go away that easy? Yeah, I'll take a lot more of them. Oh, I'll turn in the no, I ain't. 300. Uh, I think she is. I'm here. Let me see it. Just a minute. Yeah, hi. Uh, will we be before to have a telephone? To see what it's all about. Uh, Bruce, would you willing to have a telephone? Would you I want one? afford one. If we be well, if we can afford one. Yeah. Well, I like to have a private if I could have it, but I don't want no party. Take my sweat off first before well, I we sit on we gonna start at? We're gonna <laughs> start talking about. Don't tell my good coat on the ground. It's cold and damp, Bruce. I'm right behind. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> you could have had a blanket or something. No, it's all right. I. 
We'll be alright. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Nobody cares. That's not cool. If you need anything else, like the wood stove, or, I need that. or the that. new refrigerator, what's, to go sack. Mm. what we'll do is we'll shop around and find you a really good deal, and we'll pay for it, and then you can pay us back. But you won't have to pay the whole thing right off. Okay, you can pay us $10 a month or whatever you can afford. But at least the mattress is paid for. Mm -hmm. It's all paid. Yeah, but I would pay for it and have it done, and I don't have to pay no more. Yeah, but you only have $300 or so to live on for the month, so... Yeah, but I'm not going to pick up no stove for $10. I'll pick up the stove, okay? Yeah, it's, it's never mine! <laughs> it's never mine! Don't get fighting your hair! I won't take it! I'll pick up the stove and I'll take you with me, okay? And show it to you first, just so you approve of it. And we'll pay for it, and then you can pay us back. Okay, slowly, what you can afford, because when you move into a new house, it's, you're gonna, there's going to be a lot of expenses. Why? You what do you mean she's saying? Who says they'll be getting a house, we'll be, get that new house. We'll be getting a new house, we'll be in pine bars. In no, prison. I didn't say nothing about being in pine bars. We'll be in prison. prison. And how do you figure that? Well, when you got to have permission to go buy something, or you got to have permission uh, to go buy something. According to we had to have permission by you first to buy a new mattress. No, not, you don't need permission, but it wasn't very sensible to spend half your check on a mattress, right. was it? No, not really. I didn't know nothing about it till he went in to pick up something and he... I went in to pick up the goddamn gallon of paint. Yeah. And you came home with a mattress. Wow. Or you ordered. He ordered. Yeah. Yeah. Did you make that thing in there? No. I felt really embarrassed, I'll tell you, from bringing that mattress home on, on the thingajigger. It wasn't easy. And especially when you ain't got no car to go walk. It's not fun. No easy job. Do the best way you know how. Well, they would deliver this for ten dollars, but we didn't want to take ten dollars out and do it. We wanted it so to get we it home, and he, to. we really couldn't afford that. <laughs> this is holy Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> She's picking back house. That's got the rubies inside of it, a diamond. That's a valued doll. That's the one those two crooks are after. Oh, yeah. Billy <laughs> Alpha used to be with him in the studio then, and that's what a place came in the guts there. Josh. 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 Mm. He's dead. <laughs> not, not the little boy. Little slim face when I combed his hair back. Josh. Yeah, Josh. Josh. Me. Josh is the one with the ball head, the doctor. Daddy. I know I was told suckers are born every day. But that doesn't mean that the same suckers are going to keep biting because the younger generation's getting younger and smarter and they want to say no. The rich ones, their good luck is coming, getting shorter as the time goes by. I should go. Who's we playing dice with? Last night, night four. Night four. Night four. Boys, I got some good ones, huh? Oh, you're right. How's that? Well, that's what I've done. I'm also going to get this one. But you don't know what you're doing, do you? You play with us, you won't think you'll be getting it. Oh. No, but it's not even the hole. It's my deal. Well, they, you know, the whole story, all skunks smell their own hole first. <laughs> 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 you get your nose close to it. <laughs> Smart enough. You just got 30. We're going to clean up this time. Well, we're going to have the other one. Yeah. How do you know? I'll put a spell on you and you won't have that. Right. You're no, filthy. You You're scum of the earth. That's what they all tell him. <laughs> I wouldn't pull a trick like that on an Eskimo. <laughs> <laughs> Five to five and a half. You go to the uh, that meeting could just turn up into a big brawl. I mean, could. Could, yeah. That could be just not a big fight. Uh, not boys. Only fight. See, two of them fellers that uh, broke Robert's leg uh, goes to those meetings. Oh, they should go to I went to the same school, but what? Let me see. You was about what? No, you was over, you quit school when I started. <laughs>
I imagine I was already out of school before he started. Well, he only went grade three. That's right, I got it. Well, don't feel bad. Would you go grade two? I'd be ashamed to tell you how many years I went and what grade I was in when I went. Oops. Some prime grade, no. <laughs> <laughs> I went seven years, and when I when I left, I was in grade three. That's the same as I did. I went seven years. Well, I don't know how many years I was in grade one. I, <laughs> I just got I just got in grade four a reader. I, I didn't get in grade one. <laughs> <laughs> you never went to get in grade <laughs> No, I didn't go to I did your day. I get grade four. I never liked school anyway. Never grade nine, as far as I get. But that's where you should have been. You Not know, me. Well, different ones told me, they said, that when I left, they said, you'll be so sorry that you didn't go to school, you know. Now, are you? No, I'm not. Why? Because I'm not. I'm, I t when I left, the last day that I left school, they said, you'll be sorry. And I said, no way. I said, I don't think. And I've never been sorry yet. Boy, I have. And that's been quite a few years ago. Well, I quit school. Well, I had because I can't read or nothing. And I'm 42 now. So. If I had the chance to go back to make school and go to school, I'd go. Well, I'd, more, well, I'd go back to school quick now. No, no, no. Well, it makes it hard you travel. No, what I know now. Sure, you can't read no signs or nothing. No, you can't read nothing. You don't know what you're doing. I'd, if I had a chance to go back to school, I'd be... I going suppose if it said danger, Not stay me. out, you wouldn't know what it said. You wouldn't know, no. You'd walk right in. You'd walk right in. Do, do, do. Well, I think I know it's a stop sign or something like that. <laughs> You first went to that Sunday school up here, the one they tore down, didn't you? That church? Some up there, they... <laughs> then, then they wanted me to go up there to church. Did you see me going well, in there? I'm not, I'm not all? all here now, but I don't want to be drove crazy all together. Am I drove crazy? <laughs> well, you're not right. Oh! <laughs> in the head, that is. <laughs> I go to church out there. There's no, <coughs> there's no harm in going to church, but you know your limit. Some go too far and some don't. Some got the stronger religion than the others. They ain't a hat. Some have stronger religion than the other ones. Hmm. They let it go through their head too far, they got their own willpower to stop well, it. Well, it's not that so much as the other people that's in the church yeah. drives in that way. They can have their church off for all of me. I don't want no part of it. <laughs> but they build that for go up there and sit and screech and bawl and cry for hours and hours on Sundays. That's what I, I don't, they can have their religion all. I don't want no part of it. If I want to have a sing song and a good time, I'll go over to the old anvil over there to the tavern. <laughs> Must be someone in there can sing, play guitar. <laughs> Don't do that, Bruce. That's not fair. <laughs> Step out. Sit up there pretty. You want to shower there? Okay, I'll give you a rip. No smell now. You need one to cool off. Okay, let's talk about the pig and why why she can't come to the new house. Okay? She did that before. Well, we're going to talk about it again until I get this, <laughs> get this straight with you. For one thing, that land that we bought, the land that you're going to live on, was, uh, it's, you know, zoning. Every land has zoning, and it was zoned forestry, and we had to rezone it, and we zoned it. What's the zoning? Zoning. The type of, the government of activity the that can go on in that land. And we had it rezoned to um, residential. Oh. Well, there's pig smell up there. Mm-hmm. There are farms in the area, but that particular piece of land you're living on has been zoned residential. It's no longer agriculture or, agriculture or forestry, okay? And that's the reason. My and that wood's got to be cut down immediately then. No, no, that wood's there for your use over the next number of years. You just cut it down as you need it. it it's, it's residential forestry. That's what, it, what it's zoned. At. You want to rezone your land back to... to forestry, do Back you? Back I can smell pig shit. Well, <laughs> that's your right, but not for the next three years. Because we own that land for three years. When you take it over, when you take over your mortgage, you can do whatever you want. We're under your first roof, can't do nothing. 
Sure you can. You only have to deal with me. I'll let you do what you want within reason. Bruce isn't going to bring half the county into his front yard anymore. Hi, Gordy. Hi again. How are you? Okay. Brenda around today? Yes, I'm tired. Hi, Mr. Brown. Hi, Brenda. How are no, you today? Not too bad. Good. I just came over to see if you and Gordy would like to uh, go over and have a look at the house, see how it's coming along, and maybe meet the uh, Groves, your neighbors. Yeah. Okay. Gordy, are you, can you come now yeah. and finish with your wood? Okay, <coughs> let's go. Once we in Interchurch realized that the housing sponsored by the various government programs was beyond the means of any of these families, we came up with this small house program. Houses to be built in places where the people felt at home and had roots. Hi, Frank. It gave me a lot of satisfaction to show both the Groves and the Browns their new homes. But even these modest homes are out of reach of many of the rural poor, like day laborers on minimum wages. Only people like the Browns and Groves on disability and other pensions can afford them. Mom, get out here with me. Thank you. The first time we heard about Bruce and Elaine Grove was when Dale Germain came out and told us that where we was getting one of the new houses, they are going to be our next door neighbors. Okay, let's see, this is Bruce and uh, Gord, and Elaine, and Brenda, Elaine. They're just looking at their shed, you see they're just starting to uh, build it. Yours is exactly the same, only yours has got the siding on it. Brenda was saying she doesn't think that she'll be able to get used to having running water. She's so used to taking a pail and going to the brook. <laughs> oh, one of spring. <laughs> It won't take long, do you think, to get used to it? Yeah. Just a few minutes. <laughs> I'm homesick already, Bruce. I believe ya. <laughs> Why can you get on with $108 a month? I don't Cups know. Cups are here he lives. Cutting us down to the low to nothing. It's not fair to us. Now they're supposed to do some more suck hole when that time comes. No good to suck hole. Then you pull both. Why not do something with them? The only how they expect us to live on $200 a month, well, God damn well, no, they can't do it. What well, seems to live on it? There's no pity. That's the way they do it. There's no pity in this world at all. Yes, there is. No, there isn't. No uh, feeling for other people, but yes, themselves. There no, there is. That's only certain people. You don't think I'm lousy because I'm not. I'm digging my head. <laughs> I ain't got bugs. Maybe the neighbors here, Scott. Going all through the schools. Well, I'll tell you what I think. Go ahead. I'm not goddamn all stupid. Maybe retarded, but I ain't stupid as everybody thinks I am. I am. I am. No. I am. No more than somebody else. Oh, hell. Well, when I was born, my mum had me. I was put out into welfare, Gertie. And anyway, um, <laughs> uh, my Aunt Esther's husband, Uncle Omri, said that um, he, they would take me in if Aunt Elsie let mum come down. And they said mum had to stay home and pay for her troubles and her work. So therefore, I was put in welfare and when I was a little infant baby, and I was put there t till I grew up. 
I grew up mostly in the welfare ship to the homes to home. And uh, it wasn't much fun for me neither. And I didn't know my mother really until I got turned to 30 years old. That's when I went to see my Nazi and mum. So that was pretty... And I didn't think she'd be, you know, I thought she'd be a younger person. I didn't think she'd be Snow White. Has Snow White hair. I, I didn't, I really didn't think it was my mother at all. It didn't look like her. But she wouldn't say nothing to me. How'd that make you feel? Oh, I, uh, after I got up in the car, my girlfriend, her name was Connie Brown, I got up and I said, Connie, I said, Dad don't look like her. I said, that, that's not my mother. I said, that, that's not her. I said, I said, I thought she'd have better hair than me. <laughs> She's sweet. Now, I thought, I, I didn't think my mother would have snow white hair, like, I thought she'd be younger. And uh, the aide and the social workers didn't want me to know where Mum was. They didn't want me to see my mother. They wanted me to stay away from them because they thought if I went to see Mum, that Mum and I would feel bad at one another and have a hard time getting me away from my mother. But it was just like sitting in the kitchen like I was talking to you. It was just like another house, you know. It didn't It seem strange to me, sure. I was nervous and that, but it, it's just like another person altogether. You know. Did you meet Bruce after that, right after that? A few years after. How did you meet him? Tell me the story <laughs> of how you met. <laughs> Sounds foolish. Mm -hmm. Giving my cat to him. My cat, Matt McGinnis is talking to me and he says to me, he says, I know a guy is home all the time. He likes to have people talk to him. And I said, well, what's his name? He says, Bruce Grell. So I says, I says, I got his I said, I haven't got his phone number. And he said, well, I'll give it to you. And that's the only way you could get rid of your cat. In between working, laying around, and the cat surviving, we got together. After a while, her family kicked her out, so I took her home. In the fall in Annapolis Valley, they put big potato picking machines, big and heavy, and they're very sloppy. And they leave a lot of potatoes behind. Yeah, there's a lot of people comes behind the machine and picks a lot of them up. Where's Jim McGinnis, he lives in Black River, and he's Gordy's uncle. He knows quite a few of the old customs, and he knows quite a few old remedies, and different kinds of herbs, and other things like that. And we was out visiting him one day. I was surprised at, to see him making sauerkraut, because I'd never seen anybody making it before. When's the best time to make it? On the moon. Now, now is the time to make it. Because the pickle will come over. Now you see the pickle over that coat. See? Well that there was made on the older moon, there'd be no pickle. No pickle on. You could pound a little doom day and then there'd get no pickle. Take your cabbage right from the field on the new moon. New moon now. Make your coat. Well, look, see, it's the tide. See the, how the tide rolls. The tide gets bigger on the new, and then certain times on the moon, and there's others. Yeah. Well, that's the way of that. The moon rules everything. Tide rules them. Eh? The pickles are blurred over. And then the bottle of water hold it down. There's an herb grows in the woods for all diseases they are. 
Princess Pine, Labrador, and there's hundreds of different kinds of herbs. I know it was a little corner of Princess Pine, but uh, quite a few wants to know where it is, but I won't tell them. It appears to be scarce stuff around here. If the little herb goes about that high, smooth, dark leaf, green leaf, and you pull it, you got roots and all, steeping. And another thing is that this cherry bark, you peel the bark off, off of the cherry, steep that in with it. You've tasted medicine, no doubt, that taste the cherry like. Well, that's what it is. That's what it is. Well. Archie is Gordy's oldest brother. Archie worked in the woods as long as I can remember. All that family worked in the woods. I've never heard tell them, you know, go look for another job. They just seem to want to do woods work. Do you ever see a tree frog? Yeah. Ain't they thick out there in the woods? It's a little thing out there. They ain't well, very never big. Seen them. Never well, I remember. Seen them. Wasn't it? Was it you? I told you I'd bring you home. Well, we one. Yes, no, I'm waiting. Still waiting for to see well, one. Well, I can get something yeah, put like into. Like well, I can put it in my dinner kit. A, a tree. And they call them a tree frog, frog or a stump frog. Whatever they land on. Whatever they land on, they'll turn that color. They'll well, turn the same color. If they land on a green leaf, they'll turn green. If they land on a red one, they'll turn red. Yeah. Whatever color. They're only about that long. Like if they turn a light on a leaf, like say if it's sort of a red, yeah. they'll turn that color. Don't matter, you know, where they live. I took the cord off your back and put it in there. Oh. It's a big hose thing. There he is. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> How you feeling tonight? Good. That's good. Now you sat there, you got to be eight. Well, I wouldn't sit too close to her if I was you. <laughs> we can back. Yeah, one turned up. Get him, get him. Get him. Don't make him back. Yeah, okay, Archie. Don't make him back. Yeah, all right. <laughs> you get your dad up, don't feel too bad. He'll be over. Back, buddy. Oh, he, he ain't gripping up that bad. What will he do when he gets old? <laughs> Sit down. Stop. <laughs> Come on. He's going to get as old as us. Oh, he's older than you are. All right, everybody's teased there. Just wait now. Move, hold it. Right, you can't do it. No, you still, you've got, you got it backwards. Well, I have, and you have. All You're right, putting that up, then you ain't supposed to. See? <coughs> Hold on, Hannah. Hold on,
living without the running water and without the bathroom, it's aggravating. And then in the winter you have to go down and cut the ice and lug the buckets up through the snow. And then the buckets have the ice in it and bring the ice up and melt it in a pan on the stove. But once you get used to it, it don't bother you, but quite a few people said they wouldn't do it. Well, if they wouldn't do it, you got no choice to do it if you couldn't afford it. Porcupine makes good bait for trapping. Of course, you can eat them, too. No, when Archie's usually laid off for work or anything, he go trapping. Down back at his place or back to the still waters, back by Clifford McGinnis's. Danny has written stories, well, ever since grade two, three. He's been writing them, and then when he gets writing a story, he just wants to keep going. He don't write a short story. He keeps going until he gets, you know, quite a few pages, and he likes writing and writing lots of stories, and he writes them. Just like he's got an imagination world. One day I was at home doing math and someone came in and said, does Danny Brown live here? He bought a lottery ticket and won a million dollars. Yes, he's in the living room. I'll go and get him, said Dave. So when he came as happy as can be and said, did you know that you won a million dollars? No, I said. I went out where the man was. You are a winner, the man said. I was so happy I fainted. All my family and I got all new stuff. All I had since I got all new stuff was problems. One of my problems were people were bumming rides to work. Problem two, people were bumming food from me. Problem three, people were bumming money from me. Problem four, people were bumming clothes for me, and those were all my problems. I got rid of all my new stuff, and my dad got rid of all his stuff, Daryl and Mom also, too. What is it, Bruce? Poison. We don't need that. Put it in the... oh, oh. No, Bruce, put it in the garbage. Oh, no, got to have it for the rats. No, we don't need it. Here, keep the dog. You're not going to have any rats in your new house, Bruce. You're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. Bruce, will you please stop giving people hard time? I'm not giving nobody a hard time. I didn't take the place away from you, Bruce. It's not I my know. fault. But I'm not gonna have to. I'm not gonna have to suffer for anybody. Will you eat? That? That's all I need to suffer. You go from one tragedy to another tragedy. One misfortune to another misfortune. Well, I got that one in good. There you go, Bruce. Oh, 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 there you go, Bruce. It was a hard job to leave that old house that I lived in for the past ten years. Good old house. It was a real true old home. And it had some sentimental values to it that you cannot replace.
Bruce and Elaine moved, I think it was two or three days before we had moved in. The good parts are about the new home is it's a little warmer, tighter, and there's lots of hot water. I really enjoy them nice baths that I couldn't get for the past 10 years before. <laughs> you don't have to heat your water. You can go to the sink and let it go. Top story this hour. If you think we had a bad storm last week, well, enough snow fell in northern New Brunswick yesterday to bury cars up to their windshields. Today, most people will be digging out from under that 60 centimeter snowfall. A spokesman for the power company says service has been restored to the 40,000 homes affected by scattered outages. PEI, the wind is coming down and ferry schedules are back to normal after being suspended yesterday in the height of the storm. What's good enough for them to see? <laughs> they really do. I wonder who them is. What? You're referring to is good enough for them to see. Well, them thousands them of people? people. <laughs> good enough for them to take the picture. Oh, no. Not really. Yes, it is, because I can't get that up there right now. I just missed the icicles now. Yeah, well, I, I will and take it off come. and do it right when you're not around. Oh, you will? Yeah. Get it done right, I can have it wrapped around here and then and then. That looks very good. No, it don't suit me. Don't be so hard to satisfy. You're hard to satisfy some people and you don't obey. Oh, is that right? I didn't know I was... Did Bruce, that. don't argue with me the point that you're asking. <laughs> you're smart enough. Oh boy, that sounds like a big threat. You mean threat me something? When? When would I do a trick like that? <laughs> when would I do that? <laughs> it looks kind of suspicious dragging the deer out. He didn't jack it though. We just shot it behind the old house and Ronnie drove it out. We was pretty lucky to have a deer in the freezer before Christmas. Didn't think we was going to get one, but he got one just before the end of the season.
beginners in. It sounded pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> thank you. Thank the you. only one voice I didn't hear was Ronnie's. Oh, he lost. Don't thank me, just bring on the money. Seems so long he couldn't hear it. Well, I'll go down to his sister. Around Christmas time, we had a housewarming. We was all sitting there talking and joking, having a good time. When you want to take a hold of it like that, you can't shift your hold back and forwards. You just got to take the one hold of it like that and do it from there. I'm getting too old and feeble to do it. And bring it around in front of you like that. Yeah. yeah. Then step through there like that. And put that room back around to where you, where you first started out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do it. Do it well, it. Look, try it, I said. I'll try it. <laughs> She's like me, we're always good. She's like me, we're always good. That's right. See, Barb and I and Yvonne's angels. <laughs> happily for the Browns and the Groves. But what will the future bring? A new house is only a beginning. I like to get my grade 12. My friend Denise did. It'd be good if there were some night classes up here and Gordy could take reading and writing. Then he could get his driver's license and may drive a truck. We asked Danny and Daryl what they plan on doing after they get, you know, we told them they have to stay in school, to try to stay in school for education, because they can't get no job half decent for it without an education. So I told them that we'd help them far as we could. I'd like to be a cop when I grow up, or a fireman, or a doctor. I might like to be a writer when I grow up. I thought about it. I like to give a foster, a little foster child, a really nice good home. And I grew up in the foster home. Here's this is a wee little infant. Wait for a call me mummy. <laughs> Wait for him to call me mummy or mum. And call Bruce dead. <laughs>